Lifehouse Kids, my name is Daniel. I'm Halen, and I'm Ariana. Now, I'm so glad that you're joining us today. Now that you're here, let's get started. One, two, three, four. God sees you. In other words, what do you think God thinks about you? Well, let me tell you. He thinks you're amazing. He thinks you're totally unique and totally special. He knows there's no one in the world like you because he made you in the first place. You can live every day with confidence when you remember just how much he loves you. Our memory verse this month talks about how we can have the, that confidence in God. Let's read it together one last time this month. Here is something I am still sure of. I will see the Lord's goodness while I am still alive. Psalms 27, 13. Good job, everyone. Good day, friends. I'm Graham. You ever had one of those days? You know, those days where it seems like nothing is going your way? When things seem impossible? Maybe you've had one of those weeks, one of those years even. Well, I've got some good news. I know what can make your day better. Music! But it's true. No matter how your day is going or what kind of mood you're in, music can help you turn things around. It can give you confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. Here, I'll show you. Imagine that you're scared about something coming up in your future. All you have to do is play a little music. And then you'll start to feel better. Or what if you've got a big game coming up? You might be feeling a little nervous, a little jittery. Well, play some tunes. You'll be ready for the game in no time! But what if you're just feeling low? You can sit in your room all day moping, or you can Ooh. get up and get moving. You see, music can help, and there's so many different kinds of music to choose from. You'll have plenty of options when things seem impossible. Today's story will show us how God deals with the impossible. I think it might be impossible for me to move right now. I'll see you when I figure this out. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18. Israel was ruled by many kings who didn't listen to God, but King Ahab was the very worst. He even built a temple to a false god. Everybody worship Baal. He is very great because, I don't know, he can make it rain and stuff. What? But the Lord sent a prophet named Elijah to deliver a message to King Ahab. As the Lord lives, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years, except at my word. You pipsqueak. 
bail can make it rain. Also, off with your head. Elijah quickly departed the palace, and at the Lord's direction, he escaped and hid east of the Jordan River. For three years, there was no rain in Israel. Impossible. I won't allow it. Baal, make it rain this instant. Crops failed, rivers and brooks dried up. King Ahab was desperate. In fact, his wife Jezebel even hunted down most of the prophets of God that were left in Israel. Off with their heads. But through it all, God provided food and water for Elijah. In the third year of the drought, God spoke to Elijah again. Go, speak to Ahab. Then I will send rain on the land. You do realize he wants to kill me. Okay, here he goes. As Elijah traveled to the palace, he met King Ahab on the road. Is that you, you troubler of Israel? I haven't made trouble for Israel. You have. Yeah, well, I'm rubbing your glue. Whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you. You've abandoned the Lord and followed Baal. <laughs> what else? He's more popular. You want a showdown? Fine. Gather all the people and meet me on Mount Carmel. Oh, oh, and bring all the prophets of Baal. Oh, you're on. King Ahab sent a message throughout the land, and the Israelites gathered on Mount Carmel, along with 450 of the prophets of Baal. Uh, how long will you go back and forth between two opinions? <laughs> if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal's God, follow him. I'm the only prophet of the Lord left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Hey, get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets prepare one of the bulls and place it on an altar to Baal, but not light it. I'll put the other bull on an altar to the Lord. The God who answers by fire, well, he is God. What you say is good. The prophets of Baal prepared a bull as a sacrifice and placed it on the altar to Baal. A Baal, this is for you. Light this bull on fire. Hey, Baal, answer us. From morning until noon, the prophets of Baal danced around the altar, calling on their false god. <clears throat> hey, shout louder. Uh, maybe he's asleep or, or, or on a trip. <laughs> the prophets of Baal danced harder and shouted louder all through the afternoon but there is still no answer. At last, Elijah stood up. Enough! Come here to me. Elijah took 12 large stones and rebuilt an altar to the Lord. Then he took the bull and sticks of wood and placed them on the stones and dug a deep trench around the entire altar. He turned to several of the Israelites and said, Fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and the wood. You do know wet wood doesn't burn, right? Just do it. Now do it again. Do it a third time. The wood became so wet, water even flowed down the altar and filled the trench. Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let everyone know that you are the one true God. Answer me, Lord, so these people will know that you are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. There was a long moment of silence. Everyone waited, breathless. And then fire fell from heaven onto the altar and instantly burned up the wet wood and the sacrifice, even licking up the water in the trench. The people fell on their faces. Terrified, the prophets of Baal tried to escape, but were captured and wiped out. Elijah turned to King Ahab. Go, eat and drink, for there is the sound of a heavy rain. Though the sky was completely clear, in a short time a tiny cloud appeared. More clouds joined the first. They turned dark and black. The wind rose fat drops of rain splattered onto the dry earth for the first time in three years. Filled with God's strength and joy, 
Elijah raced ahead of King Ahab's chariot to the city. God had done the impossible. Music can help when you need a boost, but if you really want to know how to deal with the impossible, you should read the Bible. The things that seem impossible to us are totally possible for God. Listen, God sent fire down from heaven. He parted the Red Sea. He made the sun stand still. Jesus walked on water. He, he calmed a storm just by telling it to be quiet. He came back from the dead. Oh, and God created the earth, the sky, and the entire universe from nothing. God can do anything. Do you know what that means? It means that when you're having one of those days, or weeks, or months, or years, where things seem impossible, you can trust that God is still with you and that he's still in control. He can make your impossible seem small. Can you believe all that music fits onto this little thing? Doesn't seem possible. Hmm. Here's the one thing to remember today. God can do the impossible. And music can inspire us along the way. I'll see you next time. That story is just incredible. Can you imagine seeing fire shoot down from the sky? You wouldn't even believe it if you saw it. It seems so impossible, but that's just the thing. God can do the impossible. Will you please say that with me? God can do the impossible. There might be situations in your life that seem impossible. Having trouble with another kid in the neighborhood, or feeling stuck because something's wrong at home. It's not always easy, but you can make the choice to trust God and believe that he's with you. You can remind yourself that he's always in control. He's got a great plan for your life, and he's there to help you when you feel down or discouraged. Let's go ahead and pray now and ask him to give us that confidence. Dear God, what an amazing display of your power. Please help us see how you're working in all the different situations in our lives, even in those that seem impossible. Help us be confident in you and know that you'll come through. Give us the courage to trust you, no matter what we might face today. We love you, and we ask these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And that's all for today, everyone. If you're watching from home, thanks for joining us. If you're at one of our campuses, get ready to talk about how we can follow God's plan for our lives. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. And see you next time. Bye. Bye.